Hey everybody, welcome to Overkill Projects. In case you haven't heard, here in the United States, there is a little bit of news. Some of the states are going to start opening things at the end of the week uh, to try to get back to whatever normal means. Uh, and since we can't trust anybody not to cough directly in our faces. What are you talking about? It's going airborne. We need to keep taking the precautions that we've taken up until now. And so I thought it would be fun to do three Arduino projects that you can do at home pretty simply. And before we get started, as always, hit the like button down below to let me know that you liked the video. Check the description for links to the code, the schematics, all sorts of nonsense down there. Uh, comment down below. There's a subscribe button for those of you who want to get updates. And speaking of comments, make sure you stick around to the end of the video. I'm actually going to read through and respond to some of your comments from my last video. Uh, so that should be fun. Make sure you stick around. So Arduino project number one to keep you and your loved ones safe is a hand wash timer. I don't know why these things don't exist everywhere. And when I'm done with this video, I might put one together where I actually just make one and then put it on Kickstarter or something. And you know, you guys can let me know if you like it. But the idea is super simple. If you have ever been to a sporting event as a male, then you know that only one out of every 733 people actually washes their hands when they're done in the bathroom. There's no such thing as a healthy super Oh yeah? What do you call washing your hands after you go to the bathroom? And of those people who actually wash, none of them wash for the appropriate amount of time. And so what we have here is a project where you simply wave your hand in front of these two little LED lights and it will let you know when you are allowed to stop washing your hands. Now the recommendations here in this country are that you wash your hands for something like 30 seconds. Uh, some places they say 20 seconds. So I have this thing blink red for 20 seconds. Then for the next 10 seconds after that, it'll blink yellow to let you know that you're in that final 10 second stretch. Then after that, it blinks green to let you know that you can go ahead and start rinsing your hands. Now, the general idea here is super simple. We have an infrared LED and an infrared photodiode. The infrared LED is going to shine its infrared light that you're not going to be able to see. And now normally what will happen is that light will just sort of go off into space and the photodiode won't pick up very much of the light that, you know, that comes out of that LED. But now when you wave your hand over these two LEDs, what will happen is that infrared light will bounce off of your hand and get picked up by the photodiode. But it's kind of hard to see from the pictures how I have this whole thing set up. So you're going to want to take a look at the schematic, which as I put it up here, I realize it's probably too small to read on a phone screen. So make sure, like I said before, you check the description for links to the schematic, the pictures, the code, the whole nine yards. It'll all be down there on a GitHub. So, you know, knock yourself out. And now since I have this very large resistor in series with the photodiode, Ohm's law tells us that the little bit of current that's generated by the photodiode when it picks up some infrared light is going to be converted to a voltage according to Ohm's law. And now in the code, everything is set up with timers. Uh, every once in a while, it's going to check the photodiode to see if there is a high enough signal. If there is and it happens more than once, this is sort of like a debouncing kind of thing, then we're going to go ahead and blink the LEDs for the appropriate amount of time. And so this is a pretty great lesson if you don't know how to use timers and interrupts and overflows and all that good stuff. Like I said, code's in the GitHub. Check it out. But as you can see, it works perfectly. And this is the kind of thing that really should almost be attached to every single faucet in probably the entire world so that you know how long you should be washing your hands. You are washing them, aren't you? But now we all know that washing your hands is not enough. You need to keep a safe distance from the people around you because if they sneeze and cough in your face, which they're going to do at some point. What the hell was that? You little freckle face cartoon. And so the next device is a proximity sensor. You could strap this to yourself. You could get a few of them, put them on your chest, on your back, maybe on your hips, just like walk around all duct taped up. And then this thing will tell you when people are within two meters or about six feet of you. And I'll show you how I set it up. You can see here that this is kind of like a mess, but again, check out the schematic for a better picture of what it is that I actually have set up here. But the idea is super simple. We have an Arduino that's hooked up to an ultrasonic sensor. You can pick these things up on eBay, Amazon, whatever. They're only like a couple of dollars. And the only other thing we're using in this project is an active buzzer. Uh, we're gonna use that so that when somebody gets within two meters of us, it makes a little bit of noise and tells them that we want them to back off. And now the code for this project is really very straightforward. We're going to send a trigger signal to the ultrasonic sensor. The ultrasonic sensor is then going to send out a little blip that you can't even hear. It's going to bounce off something and then return. And now the length of time that takes is going to be the same as the pulse that we get out of the echo pin on the ultrasonic sensor. And now luckily Arduino has a built-in function called pulse in that 
lets us know the duration of that pulse. We use that duration and the speed of sound in order to calculate just how far away things are from us. And now in this case, if you are within 200 centimeters or two meters, which is just about six feet, which is the recommended distance, then you will hear a very annoying beep. And so now let's imagine a scenario where you go to the grocery store and you are looking at a jar of salsa that you really want and you didn't realize that some very sick person touched it before you and now your hands are messy and you can't wash them right away. But the real trick here is you're probably gonna be okay as long as you don't touch your face. So project number three is going to be a detector that tells you when you are reaching your hand towards your face so you can go ahead and stop before you poison yourself. And now for this project, we're gonna use a little breakout board for an integrated circuit that is called an inertial sensor. This is like a little MEMS sensor. It's like a little mechanical thing in there that tells you what the acceleration and rotation are of the thing that it's strapped to at any given time. And the one that we're gonna use in particular uh, is a six axis sensor. It's called the LSM6DS3. You can find these little breakout boards, again, very cheap on eBay and I think Amazon too. I'll put links in below in the description. I'll warn you that these are 3.3 volt devices, so make sure that you're careful when you hook them up. If you hook them up to the five volt rail on your Arduino, they will die. I have killed many of these devices. And now luckily for this device, the good people at SparkFun already have a library uh, that's all set up and makes it super easy to use this sensor. So in the code, all we have to do is set up that spark fun. Nope. So in the code, all we have to do is include that spark fun library. We just have to set up the, uh, the structure for this LSM six. Uh, and then when we get down into the loop, all we want to do is keep checking to see what the various values are. And now in particular, what we're going to look for is, you know, when you go to reach for your face, you know, you, you reach your hand up like this, you can see that if it was, if this thing was strapped to the back of your hand, right? The Z axis would kind of be going this way, right? So our Z acceleration value is going to be close to zero, or at least in absolute value, it'll be close to zero. And likewise, as we're rotating our hand up, we're going to have this, this Z axis rotation as we come towards our face. And so in the code that I have set up here, uh, I'm actually looking for relatively low uh, linear acceleration in the Z direction and relatively high rotational acceleration in the Z direction. And I'm gonna take that to be uh, a warning that I might be reaching for my face. Now, if you're really clever, you could probably come up with some really intense code uh, in order to figure out just what the hand motion is as somebody reaches up to their face and make a much better device, really. And in fact, ST actually makes a version of this MEMS device that has some built-in machine learning uh, stuff sort of that you can use. Uh, you could actually get one of these and then just train it, you know, to figure out when you're reaching for your face. The only thing is now you've got to have at least two of these devices strapped to your hands all the time, but that's okay. This is all in the name of safety. And so now when we meet all those criteria, we're going to have the Arduino light up our LED for us uh, to let us know that we have done something wrong here and we should, you know, take warning that we're getting close to our face. Yes, I'm aware that I can't see that LED, but I already put my buzzer on the other project and I only had one and I just moved and I can't find another one. So that's what we have. And so now, like I said before, let's take a look at some of your comments from my last video. CEO of Swag, who was known as Dwight Schrute when he actually wrote this comment, said, I thought you had at least 40K plus subs. You are really underrated. You are correct. I am underrated. Tell your friends. Also, bears beats. Battlestar Galactica. Here's a comment from Stuart Buffery. He says, me too. I don't know what that's in response to, but he says, I used COBOL for about 12 months in 1992, then went on to use PL1 for the next six years. Thank you, Stuart. PL1, as I said in my response, is super underrated. It's a really cool language. If you wanna see a language that uh, has been used a lot that you've probably never heard of before, check out PL1. It's great for like numerical analysis. Yeah, you should check it out. I have friends who program in that. It's pretty cool language. I actually had two matching comments that I thought were kind of funny. God AKS says, why? That's boomers language. And then uh, over here, Glenn Cheney, who appears to be a boomer says, stop calling COBOL weird and obscure. I'm sorry, Glenn, I didn't mean to offend you. Yeah, I mean, it's just a language. It's not like inherently weird or anything like that. And actually that ties into Jim Nuth's 
Kamen who says that I think you're not giving Kobo enough credit. It's very easy to read by non-computer folks, blah, 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 blah. And he's right, you know, in a lot of ways, uh, I'm not giving it enough credit and no one is. In fact, that's sort of what the problem was with Kobo is that, you know, people don't give it any credit because they don't teach it in schools really at all. I mean, it's pretty rare to find a modern Kobo class. And of course, that's super ironic since it is the language of one of the most prolific code bases on earth and there's not going to be anyone left to maintain it. Anyway, that's going to do it for today. Like I said before, if you like this video, let me know by hitting the old thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe down below. Comment uh, because I like getting those. They're fun to read. Uh, and check the description for all that stuff that I told you is down there. And I will see you next time.